Hello, hello, hello. What's up? It's Marquetta Breslin, and I'm back with another episode of Marquetta Breslin Live. I'm so excited because today I have another super special guest, and her interview is going to be amazing. Her government name, that's how we used to say it back in the day, but her government, her name on Instagram is and TikTok is simply irresistible beauty. Uh, but her name is Christina, and she is going to be talking about her journey uh, with wig making. But um, she also had a couple struggles along the way. Remember how I've been saying this week, life be life and sometimes? Well, life was life for her. And she's going to share with you how she overcame the death of her mom and just a lot of issues that she uh, dealt with, but how she overcame all of those adversities and came out on the other side. I cannot wait to get into that interview. I'll be right back right after this. It's my quite a If you want to broke your business, we will show you how to get it up, get it up. Making deposits yeah. to help you start making deposits. Yeah. We building a team full of winners from novice beginners to moguls with profits. And moguls, there's profits. Yeah. Steady for greatness, we strive. Yeah. We dropping them gems over here. Yeah. Tune in to my quarter, we live. Yeah. All right, listen, I am so excited. Be sure to drop a hello over in the comments and let me know where you are watching from. Special shout out to all of the new students who have already enrolled in Lace Wig University. Y'all know how I roll. I'm about to call some names out to shout you guys out. All right, let me turn to my screen and shout some folks out. Tasia from Texas, congratulations. Zawandra in Indiana, welcome to Lace Wig University. Mykira in Florida, welcome to Lace Wig University. Francis from Virginia, welcome to Lace Wig University. Tiffany from Arizona, welcome to Lace Wig University. Linda from Oregon, welcome to Lace Wig University. Jeffrey, can't wait to talk to you. Welcome to Lace Wig University. And Josephine from Colorado. Welcome to Lace Wig University. I wish I had time to name everybody, but I don't. Listen, congratulations to all who have enrolled in Lace Wig University. I cannot be happier for you. All right. Listen, Lace Wig University is still open for enrollment. It is going to close out on February 15th. All right, it's going to close out on February 15th. So you still have some time to get inside Lace Wig University. The cost to enroll is $3.95 or four payments of $99. Listen, for that cost, you get a lot of training, a lot of training. Uh, in fact, a couple people have, have reached out and said, is this real? Is this, is this the real price? Because it should be a lot more for what you get. But as I always say, I believe in making things affordable. And so that's what we did with Lace Week University. All right. So let me just break down really quick uh, what you get when you enroll. First and foremost, you get access to all of the phases of Lace Wig University, we, I broke it up into four phases, with the first phase being the Lace Wig Training System. I am your instructor for the Lace Wig Training System. There's 16 modules that teach you 
everything you need to know about making lace wigs from scratch. I go through the tools you need. I go through everything, everything in those 16 modules, but it doesn't stop there. In phase two, phase two unlocks your mentorship program, which is a 90 day program. The first month is dedicated to you making your first piece from scratch. And the next two months are de dedicated to your mindset as well as marketing. Then phase three unlocks the bonuses where I flew in instructors from all over the world to teach you in the things that they specialize in. Everything from uh, hair punching to foundation making, man weaves, sewing machine wigs, uh, you name it, it's in there. So do not miss out on that. When phase four unlocks, that is when you'll be able to take the test to get your certificate as well as your graduation seal to put on the website to let everybody know that you are a Lace Wig University graduate. I am so incredibly excited, but there's something else. So something that I'm doing this year that I've never done before is I am giving the first 1,000 people a copy of my newest print book, Lace Wig Revolution. This book has not been released yet. And the back of the book, it features stories from some of my students who have been through my lace wig training. And this is my favorite book. I talk about my mom, my journey with making lace wigs and all kinds of cool things up in here. All right, so the first 1000 orders is going to get a signed copy of Lace Wig Revolution, but inside, Five of those books is going to be a golden ticket. This golden ticket serves as your invitation to come back out here. I'm saying back out here, but to come out here to Las Vegas to celebrate my 43rd birthday with me. So I am so excited about that. And last but not least, this year I am bringing back my three-day lace wig immersion and marketing event it's going to be right here in Vegas, March 5th through the 7th, 2023, and it is going to be amazing. One full day of hands-on and two days of marketing. You do not want to miss this. It is a closed-door event to students only. The Lace Wig University 2023 class. It is only available for those who are part of that class. Um, if you are one of my prior students who either owns Lace Week Training System or the Lace Week Training System 2.0 or previous class of Lace Week University, uh, there are discounts available for you to be able to upgrade to be in this upcoming class to participate in the private lives that we have scheduled as well as coming to the event, all right? Y'all, I'm so excited for what's to come. Uh, the event, let me say this, let me say this, because the seats are selling, selling to the event very, very, very quickly. So if that's a big part of you wanting to get in, if you wanna come to the live event, you need to go ahead and register because the seats are selling very, very, very quickly, all right? I can't be more excited for this upcoming class. I've been waiting for this since I closed registration doors last April. Normally, I, I open enrollment like once a year. So I don't know that I'm going to open up enrollment again this year. So if you want to get in, now is your chance. Do not wait. Now is the time. Now is your chance to get in where you fit in. It's going to be amazing. I'm so excited. All right, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of tonight's topic, which is my special guest. All right, guys, listen, she has had, mm, she's had a crazy, she's such a sweetheart. She's a really, really, really amazing person. Um, I first met Christina in 2020 when Vegas finally opened the crack for us to have uh, live events again. She was one of the ones that attended uh, that live event. She's going to talk a little bit about that inside the interview, but she also shares some serious challenges that she had to deal with in the middle of trying to launch her business and implement the things that she learned. But what I love about Christina is that she is not, she's a worker. She's not a person that's going to give up. She persevered. She pushed through and now she's on the other side of things and she's doing very, very well. I cannot wait 
for you to hear her story coming up right after this. All right, everybody, I am back with another amazing, I'm just not going to stop trying to say amazing because it's my favorite word. And so I'm just going to say it. <laughs> I'm back with another amazing interview with this beautiful lady beside me by the name of Christina Hudson. Christina, say hello to everybody. Tell them who you are and what you do. Hey, you guys, I'm Christina Hudson. I am located in Lexington, Kentucky, and I am a trichologist, but I specialize in cranial prostheses which is medical wigs and hair pieces. Kentucky. <laughs> Lexington, Kentucky. I think I've only ever driven through Kentucky maybe once or twice. But when I did, it was beautiful. Well, you so, know, I'm from Philadelphia. So when I moved here, I, I thought so. I heard the accent. I was like, my dad ain't a Kentucky accent. That sounds yeah, like from I've been here since 2016. I'm trying to... They say you. They say to get more people, you got to Kentucky, Kentucky rise yourself. So I've been trying to Kentucky rise myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, whatever works, right? I'm telling you. <laughs> so, so how in the world did you venture into the beauty industry? Uh, so I've always been in beauty industry. Uh, my aunt has had her salon. It had to be about 40 something years now. She's been a stylist since she was in high school and she got her cosmetology license through high school. She's always done everybody's hair. And um, I have family that are barbers. My mom always did hair. Um, almost everybody in my family was always into some kind of beauty industry. Um, I started doing hair on my own self because I was sending it at 10 years old and it was terrible. I mean, really, really <laughs> terrible, but I didn't care and nobody was hurting my head. Um, so by the time I was in middle school, I think I was about 12. My aunt had me doing like certain stuff in her salon with her. So I was doing at that time, it was like the quick weed wigs where, you know, um, the glue and the, the, the terror hair and the, the this yep. helps mullets were made with the glues and stuff like that. So I started yes. doing those back in like, um, I was like 12 years old, maybe 11, 12 years old at that time. Cause I was in middle school. Um, and then that was like my little style hustle in school. I used to sit in the back of the cafeteria, braid people here, doing their weaves and stuff like that. I grew up in the hood. Like, ain't no way to sugarcoat it. They didn't yes. stop me from doing all that stuff. So we was in the classrooms, the teachers, the teach the whoever wanted to learn. And I was always well advanced. So I'm like, I already took these things. Like I actually took my SATs when I had moved with my dad um, in fifth grade. So when I moved back, what? To, mm -hmm, when I had moved back to North Philly with my mom, uh, they actually had skipped me past everything else because I was test out of everything. So um, when I got to middle school, I literally was already on high school level classes. Um, I even was taking algebra two back in um, middle school. So I had so. no idea. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. So I always was like, I, I'm I'm a proud geek. You know, I, I, it ain't no way to shit code it. I, I was always been a proud geek. So school has always been a thing for me and always learning. Um, but with the beauty industry, it's like it was always like a go to. Uh, it was for sure going to be quick money um, growing up. You know, when you want things that, no, honey, that's not a need. I ain't going to buy that. You had to provide your own wants. And that was how it was. And I didn't want to feel like I always had to keep reaching my hand out to my mom, my dad or my aunt, because my aunt was to us. She was the money maker in the family. So she didn't give it to you, but she wanted you to hear a whole speech to give it to you. <laughs> so I didn't want to hear that. So I was like, listen, I got to find a way around. So. And I mean, I started getting known for my sewings and everybody said, oh, she do a sewing. It's going to last for three months and your hair going to grow. And I was like, yeah, but then y'all not going to come back. So, <laughs> so that was the thing. So now I, that's something I still get booked up for a lot is the sewings and like the traditional sewings. So I'm like, okay, we got to, I got to figure out something else. And then I had learned how about, so I started, if I showed you this picture of me with my first lace wig on. So um, 2010, I got my first lace wig and I didn't see nobody really wearing wigs. You know, if they was like, oh, it's a grandma thing. I didn't care. I had to get to work. My hair wasn't done. I didn't feel like going and doing nothing. I literally sat in the hair salon, I mean, the hair store, put a few braids in my hair. And the lady was in there showing me. It was the Chinese lady. She actually, she's like, just cut the lace off and put it on. And I did. I cut it straight across. And I didn't care. <laughs> it looked like a helmet. 
Yes, I, I remember. Hey, I remember those. Listen, I didn't know nothing about plucking. I didn't even know anybody. Nobody even could answer me about the wig. They just knew I had a wig on, and they was like, "Your hair look weird." And I said, "Oh, that's a wig," but it was a nice little <laughs> wig. It just, it was a straight across, no plucking, nothing. It was literally. I still got the pictures on my Facebook. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. It was a circular hairline. <laughs> That was funny, hey. and at that time it was like only the tape out. So I put the tape. The lady was literally showing me step. I said, "She's like, put the tape on your skin." Like, I put the tape on with this straight across cut wig, and <laughs> yeah. So then I want to say around 2011, maybe 2012. I think it was like an outre lace wig or something. I can't remember. I know like, I was the same beauty supply store. She's like, "We got better wigs than now." And she 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 was like, you gotta um. She's like, people are customizing it now. So I'm like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about, girl. I'm gonna go put the wig on, ripped it, ripped the lace, threw the wig away, threw the wig away. I threw that wig away. I didn't know nothing about it. Then I went back to my sewing because it was something I was comfortable with. 2017, I moved out here, and I was like, dang, I don't, I'm not gonna want to be um doing my hair all the time. I started working at the hospital more full time, and I only had two kids or something too. So I'm like, all right, I got to figure out something. So I went and got another lace wig and I tore the frontal up. I said, okay, I'm not throwing this away. That frontal, the frontal alone was like two something from the beauty supply store. So I was like, I got to figure out. I said, I went into Google. I typed in, what is it called when they're putting the hair into the, to the, um, what is it called when I, when you put the hair into the lace, your name literally popped up and it said ventilating. And that was 2017. I'm so serious. And I was like, what the heck is ventilating? It went me straight to your YouTube page. This is from Google. Went straight to your YouTube page. And I'm watching the video. I said, oh, okay. So it was like crocheting. That's that's how I looked at it. So I'm yep. I like crocheting as a young, as real young. So I'm like, okay, I gotta figure something out. I did not have a ventilating you. I actually brought this to show you what I used. <laughs> So I made the whole worst, of course. So I literally just went and took some black weaving thread and I sewed this whole up. And I said, okay, I got to keep studying this. So I literally started talking here on YouTube from 2017 until you mentioned the class. The class was supposed to have been in 2019. Yep. Then COVID happened. Yep. So literally that's how long i was waiting to come and physically learn because like i said watching the videos i can watch videos but i got adhd so my attention span only gonna let me watch something for a certain amount of time and actually still i can comprehend it but then after a while my i mean i literally got diagnosed as a child with adhd so that's why when i talk i'm all over the place sometimes and then i gotta tell myself take it back to where you will stop that because you, you got on topic really quickly <laughs> so when I took the class, the class was so in depth. It was like I had no choice but to shut up, turn off everything I thought I knew because I do that all the time. I'm like, oh no, I know, I know. And I had to really like tell myself, no, no, you don't know. That's why you're gonna shut up and you're gonna listen and you're gonna take notes. If I'm not writing down as I'm as I'm going, I promise you, I'm gonna be like, okay, what did I just say to myself? If you look at my phone, my text message thread to myself is so long. That was the one thing I said. If y'all gonna erase my emails, please don't erase my text thread because that goes. This I had this phone since 2019. That the text message thread goes back to 2019 of me texting myself from the very first time I had first. Like I said, first started learning about the class. Um, because literally this class definitely was the 20. You launched it. You launched it. Talked about it in 2019. Mm -hmm. 2020 shut everything down because we were supposed to do it May of 2020, and then with everything, yep. he was like, "Hold on," because they got more restrictions. Because at that time, they was they were saying like no gatherings. I think by October of 2020, they gave they told you like 50 people max was for yep. the class. And everybody had to mm -hmm. be super spaced out. <laughs> yep. Nobody like I think you had your own table. Everybody had their mm -hmm. own tables. It yep. was crazy because I remember it was um, crazy. a young girl like 15, and her aunt brought her. The two brothers that drove yep. from California. I remember, um, I can't remember everybody's name, but I remember the ones who was talking as much as me. I'm like, I remember, I remember <laughs> us. Yes, so yes. That was that was a time. I'm like, I drove to Las Vegas from Kentucky. What? <laughs> yeah. I I was like, everybody's talking about, oh, you're crazy. I'm like, no. So by the time the time for the class, the tickets only the the Vegas that when you first had the class was a hundred something dollars. They shot up round trip to $900. I said, no, I'm not doing that. 
Mm-hmm. So my sister, she flew out from Philadelphia. She was like, I'll go with you. Nobody else gonna go. I said, okay, come on. It was it was supposed to be 30 hours. Um, we ended up cutting it down to like 27. We stopped in like different states. And I mean, it was, I'm I'm going to California uh, in March. I'm doing the same thing. I'm driving. It's, I'm driving. I mean, it's fun. <laughs> it's it fun. really when was. We drove, when we moved out here, we drove cross country. But I will say this. I'm glad I did it once. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> you know what? No, but, I can just but, stop and take breaks and stuff. But see, no, when, the reason why I say that is because the kids were very young when we did it and they were so mm-hmm. restless. Yeah. So, I mean, we've done it a couple times. We've driven from South Carolina to Oklahoma, uh, from South Carolina to Vegas, from Oklahoma to Vegas. So we've done it a Try few times. times. Yeah, yeah, we've done it because my husband would rather not fly anywhere. Yeah. If he could drive and, yeah. and travel to that's, that's me. <laughs> I, I spent less money driving to that class than I had probably on any of my trips I've ever taken. Seriously. Dang, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. So I so what, say, I what was, I'm doing it again, I'm doing it again. Yeah, yeah. I would. I mean, <laughs> hey. Especially mm-hmm. if you like driving. So what was your journey like after the class? So after the class, and I, I, I remember we were all masked up, mm-hmm. I think. We were we all masked up, and it was just an interesting class. That was the last class I had for almost a year. The uh-huh. last, I think, I think you guys were the last class. And then I didn't have another one until probably the end of 2021, because shortly after what? that... Yeah, because shortly after that, I had COVID. I got COVID and it almost took me out. I was in ICU no. for five days. Yeah, in, in April. Um, and then I c- couldn't talk. So it took me a minute to get my bearings back. And I think I had maybe one or two close to the end of the year in 2021. And then 2022, what? I think I had two or three events. Yeah, it was 2021, you said, was your was your rocky year. Mine yeah. was, mine was two. I had two of them. It was twenty one and oh twenty two. Yeah, it not was, back it to was, back. Yeah. So twenty twenty one, I ended up finding out I was pregnant in in May on my daughter's birthday because she keep making sure I know that May 18, twenty twenty one, and um, with me always having high risk pregnancies, they just kept saying they actually wanted me to get a medical, a medically abortion or however they announced it, but it was an abortion. Mm-hmm. Um, for medical reasons, and I had till June tenth of that year, and I said, you know what? I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm a, I'm, a, I, I let let me let's play it out because I've never had abortion, but I had a stillborn two miscarriages before. So I'm like, yeah. if I miscarry, I'm like, you know, I'm mentally prepared for that. I'm like, mentally, I'm not prepared to know I actually aborted a baby that probably could have mm. survived, or just I didn't want that. So, um, yeah. July of twenty. 21, I had NASA said, hey, you guys, um, they placed me on bed rest because I was in so much pain. My left leg to the point where it was so heavy, I could, I was like a drag every time I stepped, and it was mm. a lot of pain. They didn't know why. Um, they was like, well, I, maybe it's just the ligaments. That's all they kept thinking. Maybe it was the ligaments, but I mean, it was so hard to step on my left leg. So they had me in compression socks. Um, I had a belly band. They had me in a back brace. I like, just stuff to um, reduce Jesus. the weight of the pregnancy. And by October, I kept saying, hey, like, I can't walk. I'm like, I really can't walk. I took, like, my last two clients in my salon. Um, and that's the crazy part. I literally opened, I got this salon suite March 27, 2021. And then immediately was placed on bed rest right after that. And I was like, well, I, I so I went and bought this chair. And I was like, hey, you know what? So I let clients say, hey, if you see me sit down, it's just because I'm pregnant. I was so small. They didn't know. They, they was like, oh, they didn't know you said you was pregnant. It's like, I thought I said, they heard said it, but I didn't. They're like, your stomach was so small. I didn't know. By October, my stomach was so huge, I could barely move. So I did the grand opening here that they had did because this building opened in 2020 and then COVID shut them down. So they only had like five stylists in here, but everybody was shut down. They didn't mm. do a grand opening until October of 2021. Right after the grand opening, I was like, hey, I really can't move. I was like, I was, I felt like I'm like, it was like a lot going on. Went to the hospital for my ultrasound and they was like, hey, they was like, you don't feel the contractions? I said, yeah, I've been telling you guys I felt the contractions. I had 12 um, three-minute apart contractions at my one-hour ultrasound appointment back-to-back. They just submitted me to labor and delivery. Um, And they was like, hey, 
we want to um, check something. I was in the hospital for four days before I tested positive, tested positive for COVID. So I was like, so did I get it from the hospital? Because I'm like, at the time, I still was working at my job. And we had to get tested Wait, for Wednesday. you were pregnant with COVID? Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. And at that time, I was working at Toyota. And every Wednesday at Toyota, you had to get, test, um, had to get tested for COVID. That, thir- that Wednesday, I had just got tested. It was negative. I went in for my ultrasound that Thursday. That following Tuesday during my admission, they had swabbed me for COVID. And I said, no, it ain't no way in the world. I said, check me again. I said, because I only been here. I only been dealing with your nurses. That's the only people that I've been in contact with within these last few days. Literally got COVID while I was in the hospital. Mm-hmm. That was an experience. This is in tw- all in 2021? That was an experience. Um, They shut wow. the event system off. So your COVID doesn't seep into the hospital's Yes, they had me in and in, in a room that was like, like you had to go through one room to clean yourself before coming mm-hmm. into my room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was mm-hmm. crazy. And then in in that it was behind some like curtains or walls or something on the. So ICU I was floor. in the labor and delivery section. So they had a section oh, of labor totally delivery different. for the private yeah. rooms, but you never got your food. So now I'm sitting here pregnant and hungry and in pain. The only thing they came in and did once they got on that was put my feet in these, uh, oh, I forgot what it's called, so that my blood can circulate. And I'm like, Oh, hey, the little thing that squeeze your legs. Yeah. And I went to get up to go to the bathroom, and my stomach went from looking like I was about to deliver a baby to three months pregnant. I said, something's wrong. They kept saying, oh, we checked your monitor because they was like, the heart rate keep dropping. I said, let me show y'all something. I said, I came in here on Thursday. This was me on Thursday when I came in here. I said, this is my belly. Look at my stomach right now to the point where my stomach was so sagging. I actually thought he was dead. I actually oh. thought he was dead. Um, so they had they they went out, they had they talked, they came back like 15 minutes later and they're like, hey, so we decided, um, do you want to get induction or do you want to go ahead and get an emergency section? I said, I do not want induction. I see my sister get induced, she was in labor for 20 hours when that happened. I said, I never had C section. I said, but you know what? I'll take the chance. And this is where I c- congratulate UK because I was surprised they gave me a black female OB. My biggest fear was come off that table. I re- just remember, and because I was a, I was awoke, they get, they didn't want me to put me to sleep because they didn't know the extent. And they and all I could hear them say, "Oh, I'm so glad we didn't part of sleep." Uh, I actually Ooh. my placenta was embedded into my uterus, and when they went to go to remove the baby. I bled five liters of blood out. And I just remember getting like freezing cold. And they was like, hurry up, go get some hot blankets. Oh so they, they rushed in with like five hot blankets. And I'm like, hey, I'm freezing. And I just kept telling myself, and I mean, literally, girl, don't close your darn eyes. Because I felt my eyes like getting heavy. And I just kept saying, don't close your eyes, don't close your eyes. Um, the anesthesiologist, I just kept seeing him like kind of cut his eye behind a curtain a little bit at me. And I was like, uh... Lord, this is about to be in. I didn't even know I was in there for five hours. Because they was like, oh, it was only going to take an hour. I didn't even know I was in there for uh, five hours until I came out. Listen, he was like, girl, he was like, they came back here and they was like, we just want to know if she need a blood transfusion. Are you okay with that? He said, they took so long to come back. He said, I thought they was about to come tell me some bad news. I said, for real? He said, I said, I felt like I was in there for like an hour. He said, no, you was in there for like five hours. When I came out, it was nighttime already. When I went in, into labor and delivery you know they tell you the time it was like maybe um eight o'clock that morning when i came out and i went to the room i think it was maybe five in the evening or something like that so i didn't know i was in it that long because like i said it didn't it didn't feel like it just felt like just really really cold so um Mm -hmm. i ended up catching the alias where my intestines got frozen so to this day i still get like this cold sharp pain in my intestines because my intestines got frozen from the surgery Mm -hmm. so that was my 2021 I had no I did not idea see my son until any of this was happening. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know what he looked like until three weeks after he was born. Three weeks? Because I had to get cleared because I was in the hospital for a whole, the whole right. month of November. You had COVID. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And because I was in the hospital the whole month of November, basically I, I did my two-week quarantine also while I was in the hospital. But I had to get cleared by the health department per Kentucky law. You, The health department has to declare you. And I said, she was like, well, where you at? I said, I'm in the hospital. She said, and they need us to clear you? I said, yes. So I did, I could not see him until they released me from the hospital. And then I had to wait an extra week to go see the um, health department because they were closed for the Thanksgiving holiday. So <laughs> then 
when I mm. met him, my baby probably was like three and a half weeks old, almost four months old. And I had, that's when I found out like, um, they had set the monitors up so I could see from home. And he had all these things. He was only three pounds, 15 ounces when he was born. Um, he probably, I think he flatlined the whole time he was in the NICU, maybe about 21 times, 22 times until he had came home. Uh, he was feed to all the way up to that January. And then my mom passed away December 13th. So, I was like, oh, uh, this what year? This was 20, all this 2021. All in 2021. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I literally, that was my biggest fear. Cause you know, they always say it take a life to bring a life. And I just kept saying either the baby's going to die or I'm going to die for my mom to survive. And I was like, you know what? I felt like if I passed my mom survived to me, that was, I was like, okay, that's going to be okay for me. Um, so that was my my thing and I literally had just came home from the hospital seeing the baby at the NICU and I was like I'm tired I need to go in the house and my little sister had just came from Philly so she was at my house for like two months because they had kept telling us hey your mom's not gonna make it to the new year so we like well we're gonna turn up and we're gonna enjoy it while she's here me my mom and Vincent literally watched my mom take her last three breaths she my mom my sister was like mom she took a breath for her and I said oh Maria stop playing girl she took a breath and then this was like I don't think she playing and she took one breath and that was how my mom passed away and i was like did i think so was she, mom your mom <laughs> was she she was sick right no she actually got um i can't speak on it for legal reasons but gotcha. my mom was in the hospital at the time and legal reasons my mom was in the hospital and things took a turn for the worse with no explanation yeah. so my goodness yeah that um you just don't go from an able-bodied 52 year old woman who can walk drive talk shop work and everything else mm -hmm. to hospice so because yeah. my older sister had moved out and because i was high risk pregnant they was like well uh, i said no we'll do hospice at home i'm like you know uh, if she gotta get lab work done i'm licensed to draw blood and do her labs and things and then i end up with the high risk pregnancy so they was like um um you're you keep getting sick. They didn't want me basically around my mom. So my sister was like, yeah. too, she's a RN. So it was easy for my sister to kind of like, it was a lot on her. So, but it was like, yeah. it was easy for her to, uh, we just didn't want nobody else to have my mom's care in their arm, in their hand. So we worked directly yeah. to the hospice. Um, anytime she didn't need labs or anything done or injections, stuff like that, I just did those. The only thing is I had to um, wear a mask because they didn't want me get my mom sicker basically because they didn't know why mm -hmm. I kept getting sick while I was in so much pain. Cause of the pregnancy and my sister was like um she was like doing most of her feet in changes and things of that nature but that was our 2021 and when she passed i was like i, I don't know i was like because my mom has always supported everything i did with this business um she she was like the number one person to speak up for the business more than i was at one point because i was working in the hospital and she was like oh girl you need to take my mom i got a business card she she do wigs too and she was at um, every event I went to. She actually was supposed to come with me to this event for the, the ventilator in, in, um, in Vegas. She was like, girl, just pay for You know, you're going to pay for me anyway to go sit in the class with you. I'm like, yeah, but you're not going to learn it. She said, it don't matter. She said, I'll be able to sit in the class. She just wanted to sit in the class, literally just sit in the class. So she didn't even care. So when she ended up getting sick, and I was like, it was a shocker to all of us. And mm -hmm. 2021, my it was a lot of deaths in my family. Uh, um, My oldest daughter went to go get my... I call her my sister, but she's actually my cousin, my, my aunt's daughter. She went to go wake her up the second day. She wanted her to cook any breakfast. Walked in and found her dead. Literally, mm. um, the heart attack. She was trying to get to her asthma pump and literally panicked, which caused her to go into a heart attack, trying to get to her asthma pump. Jesus. And my daughter walked in on that. And then after that, it was like, I think five or six more family deaths. And I was like, I was like, what the heck? I'm like, it's 2021. Like, you know, however I got that year. So I'm like, 2021, I said, it got to be that year. So I said, um, come 2022, I'm like, everything that happened in 2021, everything that had paused, everything I was going to do, I got to use that. I said, because I can sit around and keep talking about it, trying to get sympathy and stuff. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not that kind of person. So I'm like, uh, I, I'll just use it. So I just been using it yeah. as a way to drive. So um, I've been able to like, if I want to talk about things like that, anything involving my mom, I don't try to go too in depth with it, but I'm like, I just always talk about, cause me and my mom was 
was always like this. You know, I always tell people, you know, I was the favorite child. And my sister and them, they know they can't battle me with that, but they, they try it. But I'm like, let's be real. <laughs> I, I was the favorite kid, you know? Me and my mom was more best friends than anything. I'm like, we've lived together since, officially since I got my first apartment in 2008. I moved my mom in probably like two months later. <laughs> oh, I remember, like, I, I remember just, you being here. You were telling me about your mom. We prayed mm -hmm. for her together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably why you've always been on my heart. You, I've always mm -hmm. thought about you because I know, I know what that's like. Like mm -hmm. I had that type of relationship with my mom too. So I know, I know what yeah. that's like. But you know, the blessing is that you guys were there when she took her last breath. That's the yeah. blessing because she was she was with you guys. Cause it was the same way with us. Um, my mom was literally surrounded by family mm -hmm. when she was taking her last breaths. Her yep. sisters were there, you know, we were there, my brothers, and it was yep. just it was a blessing to be there at the very, very end. It's yeah. bitter, you know, obviously we want them to be with us forever. Right, but, of course. But, you know, it was, I'm thankful that we got to spend yeah. those last moments with her, as I'm sure you are. So yeah. while 2021 was insane for you. Yeah. So moving into 2023, how did you take everything that you had been through. And first of all, how is your son now? Um, so he has lung damage still. Uh, he's on a lot of steroids and he sees a lot of specialists, but he's bad. Okay. I wasn't expecting this one year old to be as wild as he is. And I know that's because- Oh, bad, like me, wild, bad. Oh, I thought you meant like he wasn't doing well. Oh. <laughs> oh no, honey. Oh no. And I was like- <laughs> For you to have, you know, for you to be a little premature baby, I'm like, first off, he's strong. So you got to watch his hands. When he want that little hug, he he's a hair grabber. He ripped a patch of hair out of his dad's beard. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you, how did you take everything? Because a lot of people, I just had this conversation with a close friend this morning about mm -hmm. grief, grief and grieving. And people, as you know, people go through grief in different ways. Some people... Yeah. Um, are like a recluse. They go into a deep, dark hole and depression, and it's hard for them to come out of it. Some people come back too soon and don't deal with the yeah. grief. Some people handle the grief and move forward. And it's usually the people that, that are able to still move forward is yeah. in God's yeah. grace. I always say, yeah. I'm only right here right now after having lost my mom, who I was very close yeah. to, by the grace of God, because no, that, that's the only way for me to sum it up. Because otherwise, I know that I could not have done it. I would yeah. probably still be in that sunken place. So how, with everything that you went through mm -hmm. in 2021, were you able to pick up the pieces and start building your your wig business? And, and how, how, how sway? <laughs> um, honestly, so I have never gotten a chance to cry for my mom yet. Um, when she passed away Ooh. and everybody had left the house, the corners and everything, I went upstairs in the room and Vincent bust out crying. I'm just like, that's my mom. Like she was just, you know, she's your mom in law, but I'm like, let me get my cries out first. And I couldn't even, because I'm not a crier. So, but I'm like, for my mom, my mom was worth everything, but I couldn't even phantom to get how I felt out because I mean, literally broke down. He's on the floor crying. I'm like, dang, I'm like, literally, uh, I was just using to come into my salon. I was just turning on music that I know me and my mom was, we was always big into the nineties era. Uh, so eighties, um, R and B nineties, all, all that school jazz R and B and stuff like that. I just turned it on. And honestly, I just will ventilate. And I, I don't Ooh. to other people. They'd be like, Oh, I can't do that. They like, it's too tedious. I'm like, it's therapeutic for me. Um, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I'm tuned in. And I was going, I probably didn't sleep for like the first four months after I had the baby. Mm -hmm. And then an additional four months after my mom. So I was up, uh, I'm still dealing with insomnia because of that. I was up for weeks straight, just ventilating, 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 ventilating. I ended up making um, 20 wigs in two months because I didn't get no sleep. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so serious. And I was just like, well, whatever. And then my girlfriend was like, well, let me style the wig. So she, now I don't even style them anymore. She, I just make them and she like, let me know when you're ready. She do all the style on my wigs now because I'm just like, well, I just, I just wanted to ventilate. Like when I get to the process after I'm done ventilating, I don't know when I don't want to 
style them or anything. I just want to move on to the next one. That's... Yeah, because the holes are so tiny. He's like, I'm like, I got, I got the momentum up. I'm like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm like, let me keep going. So now that a lot of times I got to work from home the, because the kids are back in school. Oh, that drives me insane. <laughs> all you hear is crying and mom. And I'm like, so y'all sat right here with your dad for all these hours. Y'all ain't asked him not one question. Now I'm here. Y'all got <laughs> all the questions in the world. No. So it was to the point I wasn't leaving the shop until like 10, 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> then I would go home. And once everybody finally was asleep, about 2 o'clock in the morning to like 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, I would just up and leave. Wow. So. <laughs> Wow. So you took, you channeled your grief mm -hmm. and put it, put it right there towards the ventilating. And so at what mm -hmm. point did you start to build? So you have all these wigs. At what point did you start to implement the things that you learned in the class? And you took another class, I think for me, Million Dollar Stylist yeah. Live for a yeah. three day virtual class. Yeah. How did you put all of those things together to, to build your business? It took me a year. It took with well, me taking a class with you, the hands on 2020 and that um that virtual class and like the beginning of 2021, before all that stuff had happened, it took me a year to say, you know what, well, hold up. I feel like I wasn't reaching the right people. I felt like I wasn't, I guess like making the right sales. And that's like I said before, I if you really notice my finances on it, I didn't feel like I was making the right sales because I'm like the to me it wasn't consistent. So I'm like, oh. I don't, sometimes I'm like, I don't see me packing 20, 30 wig boxes at a time and shipping them out. But I'm like, I had to, I'm like, wait, don't do that. I didn't, I, I it took me to tell myself, don't think about what nobody else is doing. Don't think about, think of, don't think about what you're not doing because you don't see it. Because for one, what you're doing, you're not going to see right away. And, they, and it, that's something I think a lot of people, when they start, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to automatically start making like thousands of dollars. And I'm like, no, I already knew for one, that wasn't going to happen. So I had to really set back on like, Think of everything you took in those classes and really think to how she said you need to niche down and find something that you're already comfortable doing. So I was like, um, on top of your classes, I took a class for trichology because mm -hmm. I was like, when I found out my my medical background can kind of still keep me in that with the wigs, I was like, all right, let me figure this out. During that class, she was like, well, you can do prosthesis. And I'm like, so I can still do my wigs. I'm like, I don't want to get rid of my wigs. I don't want to just focus on clients in my chair. That was not ever my goal. I didn't want to just, um, I'm big on energy. I did not want to have a lot of different energies coming into my salon. I don't mind having to communicate with them via like an email or an order and just like minimum conversations. But if I give off energy, it's positive when you come in here, I set the aura for you. But I've had come across a few energies that was like, okay, it's time to scale back from having a lot of in-person services and like and just sit down so i pulled up i had ordered the million dollar journal notebook from you during that 2020 hands-on class and that during that whole two-day class i mean everything you said down to like um uh just how to find a niche and everything else breaking down the mm -hmm. online business course you gave us for the million dollar stylist all those mm -hmm. things and i really just went back to them i'm like all right i'm already learning this i don't want to take another class that's telling me the same stuff i already know i took already and then mm -hmm. it's not even focused on specifically the, the, the genre I'm in, which is like making wigs from scratch. It was just like basic how to, and I'm like, I don't want the basic stuff you're telling people that you found online. I'm like, somebody who already taught me this, they're in the same era, um, the same community. So um, 2022, it was not the full 22 um, that everything I took from the class, I was able to implement. Um, July, I know it's July in Kentucky, is like a rough patch, everybody travels because that's the only open month of the whole the whole year that everybody's able to travel. Kids don't have no sports. The only time vacation in between school ending and school going back in. Mm -hmm. So I use that as a time. I said, okay, I need to reflect. I need to um, go back to the basics. Um, maybe around like I want to say August September is when I started doing little stuff that was like uh, reminded me of what I already said I needed to do. Like the implement is like so. With the niche down, like I said, I took what I learned in your million dollar stylist class and the trichologist class, and I put them together, and I was able to kind of start building content around it. And then I had some of my hair loss clients that was comfortable with me using them and posting their stuff. So I was like, yeah, I need more of y'all that want to be doing this. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, because if I keep just showing me the wigs, I don't I don't always wear my wigs. Like, this is glueless. I, as soon as I get off of here, I'm, I'm like, I ain't going to hold you. I'm probably take this wig off. I, I take them off <laughs> as soon as I don't have to be on camera. So, um. 
a lot of times people are like, oh, well, can we see the finished results? And I'm like, for the most part, I just I just make them. I don't even um, finish them. I got to wait for my girlfriend. Um, when she's off work, she comes in my shrine. She styles them. Then I take pictures. I'm just like, yeah. So I'm like, for the most part, really, it took me um, getting all the credentials I had, getting all the education I already learned, like I said, from your Million Dollar Stylist class, from the hands-on class, and from the trichologist, and really put them all together. And I said, I got to find something that's comfortable for me. Then I got invited to do an interview with a local news station because a few of my clients, they're like, when I found out afterwards that they were like somebody's in Kentucky, I'm going to give them that shout out because I didn't I didn't know they were who they were. They just booked appointments with me. They said, hey, we sent on social media and they just book regular appointments. I don't I don't look people up. So um, they came in. They was like, oh, girl, you should do this. You should do that. And they say, no, I got reached out to from the local news station. I was like, yeah, my client would just tell me about you. And they invited me in. I did my interview with them. And from that that interview on that whole Christmas break, I did not take off because I was in here dealing with the um, insurance companies, ventilating the wigs. Like right now I got nine wigs I have to make. Nine. And God is so good. Yeah. And I was really happy about that. Cause I was like, dang, I just said, I felt like I was only making one or two wigs for people at a time. And now I got nine orders. So I feel like that's amazing. If you're going to take the class, you just got to understand you're not going to see results in two hours because you took the class. That's just the first. <laughs> you, you gotta you gotta put the work in. And I'm not always yes. on social media, so I know that's still my fault because I'm do still slacking at social media, even with all the stuff you told us about automating it. <laughs> I got all hey. that stuff. I just when it's I say okay. I, just, I don't have the time sometimes, and I, when yeah. I do have the time, I'm like when I got it. I'm, I'm on here. I'm active, but I'm like, when I don't have it, I, I just don't have it. So I'll jump on sometimes and say, yeah. hey, you guys, I just don't have the time to always turn the camera on and show me working. I'm like, um, I'll try to record snippets of it. I said, but usually when I'm working, and especially if I'm working from home, I'm like, I'm not just working. I'm like, I'm, I'm working. I hear my kids. I got to stop. I got to do this. I'm like, I said, so I don't want to turn my camera all the time. I said, because I want to keep my, my home, my home. I want to keep that for me. That's my zone. I, I don't have to put clothes on when I'm home. So, you know, when you home, you're home. I'm like, when I'm at the shop, I'm like, of mm-hmm. course, I'm dressed up. So I don't mind turning the camera. But I'm like, when I'm home, no. That means like, I keep clothes on because I got to get on the camera. I don't want them to think I'm doing nudie and stuff like that. So for, <laughs> for the most part, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, uh, so forgive me in my absence when I'm not um, posting social media. I'm like, but when you ventilating and you realize what you're doing, I'm like, you, you realize this is not something that every two seconds you, you got to be like, oh, let me put the camera in my face. I'm like, you can put the camera on. I said, but once you're on a roll, like when I'm on a roll and then when I am live and I'm doing the ventilating, I don't want to answer the questions because I got the music going. I'm, I'm, I'm just you're in the zone. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's what, it's just, I feel like if you're going to get into it and they're going to take this class, what they really should be. Because like I said, when I didn't know what the word was, I didn't know what the process was in 2017. Mm-hmm. All I did was type in, what is it called when you put the hair inside of the lace? And then your name popped up. From then on, I've been an avid follower of your movement and everything you've been doing since 2017. So I just feel like, um, like I said, anytime I feel like I got double back to something that I took down in the class in my notes, I do it. I'm not ashamed of, uh, like I said, I'm a proud geek. I'm not ashamed of going back to learning something. I feel like if you invested your money in something, why are you not using it to your your best ability? There's no reason that, oh, I feel like I didn't learn this from that person, so I'm going to go to the next person. If you keep taking it from each person and you don't do nothing about it, at this point, it's you. It's, 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 it's nobody else. And I know mm-hmm. I'm a procrastinator. That's my biggest thing. Like, I'll be having all this work and I don't do nothing with it. So I know I know what stops me and I know it and what don't stop me. And I know I always put my own foot my own way sometimes when I just like, all right. And I take mental health breaks all the time. When I feel like I'm overwhelmed, I feel like it's too much going on. Like I said, I was diagnosed with ADHD as a kid. I'm not heavily, I'm not medicated. Um, I always told my mom and I'm like, I don't need that stuff. I'm like, I tried, my mom tried it with me one time and it had me like dragging. So I always say I will find things that keep me, my kind of busy, that'll keep me from uh losing focus and keep me from, um like, I guess like feeling like I'm I'm not paying attention enough. So um, mm-hmm. knitting, crocheting, I'm really, really good at both. Um, I love reading books. I'm like a I literally, mm-hmm. 
I literally put this phone down and I have a huge book collection that my kids all of a sudden they start to play with. Don't play with my books now. <laughs> Don't play with my books. Uh, I got chill books on my shelf. Um, we even took the class. The class had Ed Rush in it too. I remember. Yes, it did. Yes. Yep. So Dad Ed and I taught Million Dollar yep. Stylist Live yep. together. Yes. Yep. That, I'm t listen, I'm telling you, I'm I'm still in the text community. So when you send the text message out, like I said, I may not be able to respond to stuff all the time because now I'm more on the busier side. So I do feel like um so my focus now is actually hiring. Uh they met with the Kentucky uh revenue department and they helped me set up with how to go about um setting up like W fours and everything else. So I'm I'm at that point now and I feel like I can't hire millions of people, but I can hire two. Um, I did have um, one person apply to do like a lot of my work from home on the computer wise, because now I'm spending a lot of time dealing with the insurance companies, dealing with the people that do my billing and processes for the medical wigs and the hair piece and stuff. And I'm like, that's taking away time that I really need to be putting into the wig making. So um, I'm doing like a working interview now with her and um, my client actually just left, so I'm waiting to see how that goes with how she put the information in, how she followed with it, and then we're going to go from there. But I feel like now um, this is going to be my fourth year in business. So this is a, this is amazing, and yeah. you know what what's um, what's amazing to hear as well. Yesterday, I just did an interview with a student who started. She found me in 2017, mm -hmm. much like you attended <laughs> an event that I did in 2018. Wow. She knew nothing. She flew in from Nigeria. She didn't even have tools when she got here. She had her tools shipped to no. the hotel and they put the they put them in the basement by accident. So she hadn't even picked up a ventilating needle ever before. No. And I just interviewed her yesterday. She just she just told me she has a staff of 30. That she has, she has a wig factory wow. in Nigeria. She has a staff of 30 people. She trained everybody. Wow. Went through the system. Took everything she learned at the live event and inside the system. Right. And now she is flourishing. So you are on, you are oh, like on the same path. That's amazing. It's incredible. It, it's just so uh, refreshing to hear um, how you guys are flourishing and doing your thing. I think yeah. that is just, it's just amazing. So before we go tell, well, first of all, let me ask you this. Yeah. If anybody is on the fence right now and they're watching us cause, cause Lacewood university is already open for enrollment right? and they're watching and they're like, I don't know, should I do this? What is your advice to them? Um, a lot of times people think, cause the first, all, all, I always hear, well, you got four kids, you know, um, how you run the business and you a mom, because I don't want to always be someone's employee. That's, that's number one. Um, and I feel like if you already are doing something, something's already a passion. If you're making wigs by sewing machine, by hand, if the person buy a wig from you and they rip it by ass and they say, Oh my God, Hey, I, I messed my lace up. You, do you know how to fix it? And you tell them, no, you just sent them to be a customer of somebody else. So I don't, I don't really, if you can minimize them, have, if, if you're local, they're local, it happened locally. Why would you not want to offer local services? Because you learned it the correct way. And, and there's, there's multiple ways to learn things, but to get down to the niche and to see how you can do things in so many different ways, you even were showing us how to do like with the, uh, like the manufacturer wigs and how to go about just kind of like restyling the, the manufacturer wigs and putting different knots. So like you showed us multiple different methods on how ventilating could be. You don't have to just make a wig from scratch. You don't have to just make a full lace wig. You can make so many different kind of wigs just from learning this one method. And I, that's there's it. really no other way to put it. If you could take one method and turn that into a million dollar dream and you put your all behind it, even with hiccups, even with family problems, even with jobs, bills, everything else, if you actually take your time to say, all right, you know what? I don't want to make a full wig. I said, but I, I can offer just repair services. You can't offer repair services if you just take some thread, some nylon thread and just sew it up. Nobody wants that no more. We we want you to put your money behind behind your skill set. I feel like don't don't if you you're gonna be on the fence because you're gonna feel like, was this an investment for me? Yes. I'm telling you, I took this investment and I got this class in 2019. I didn't take this class physically until 2020 and it is 2023. And I'm able to say that everything I learned from that class in 2020 
a whole year went through a whole bunch of personal stuff that made me feel like maybe I shouldn't do it. And then I just did it. 2022, it took me two years to officially say that I feel like I mastered what I what I invested in. And yeah. to the next person, it don't have to be like, oh, no, I can do it better. Don't worry about what the next person is doing. If you know you want to do something, you know you have the mind frame and the patience because you need patience to do this. If you got the mind frame and you got the patience and this is something that you really want to turn from just a thought in your process to a passion and, and to a skill set, I feel like there's no reason you're not taking the class. I feel like there's no reason that you're not going back because you. I've, I've reached out to you many a time since that class, many a times, and I got a response. Even if it took like a while or so, you responded. I asked you for information. I've never had a problem getting the information. Not everybody, and that's called CEUs, people. If y'all ain't never been to college or nothing, or you don't know what continuing education <laughs> credits is, that's kind of like a CEU when you're able to reach out to someone you took a class with and they're able to still continue to help you. You don't get that many um, people that are teaching classes now because saying you teach a class and then not offering resources, not offering assistance, not being able to help your students still afterwards, if that's not something you're going to get for the return for your money, what was your investment for? But you mm. still got to put that work in. I feel like, like I said, mm -hmm. I took this class and I've taken the business class afterwards. If you want to take this class, take the business class afterwards. You want to learn from somebody who is in the industry. And I'm not saying because you can't learn from people who just speaking on general business inquiries. You want to, this, this industry is not so open to everybody. Yeah. Once you're in it, you're in it. And I feel like you got to you want to just stay in it. So if that means taking a class and knowing that, oh my God, I forgot what Marquetta told me. Let me contact her. She's going to respond. Whether it's you or someone on your team, I'm telling y'all, she's going to respond. Don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid if you're still on the fence. And I took the class on the payment plan. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Because at that time, I was still working at the hospital and I still had bills, honey. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to do this class because I didn't think I was going to have the funds at the time. And when I seen that payment option, you think I didn't select it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell everybody, option. I make no. everything, I try to make everything as affordable as humanly po no, possible. No, seriously. Because I know well, what it's like. It's time. <laughs> um, my daughter got like archery or events like that. I got my dome head. And I got this little kid. And what I'll do is, because um, I don't have a draw card, I'll put the hair in between one of these little Velcros. And if you see it, I'll... There you go. I'll be like this. There you the, go. With the mannequin hair know. right between my knees. And I'll be like... <laughs> <laughs> and my little I love it. You don't I have to love do it everywhere you go. I said... Uh, I do because I'm about to sit here for four hours because you got to still check in and uh, until your time. I said, honey, that's four hours. I could be doing something else. So I take the, the, the dome heads with me. Um, doctor's appointments because uh, now we in a doctor's appointment as long as we need to be. Uh, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't care where we at. The only thing I don't take it to is like if we go to a restaurant, okay. You know, I don't play <laughs> about my food now. I don't play about my food, but everywhere else. That's um, hilarious. Yeah. My car, everywhere you go in my house, there's a dome head in there and even in my car, just in case, I just in it. case. So <laughs> I just feel like y'all going, y'all going to invest into a class that's well worth the investment. Um, like I said, yeah. take the business class afterward, the million dollar style class afterwards. I had that book before I actually even, um, came to the hands on million dollar stylist book. Yep. Yes. Yep. I love and it. I remember. Love it. Love it. And now I got two, and I actually gifted the second one, not the one you signed. The, the first one I bought, I actually gifted it to somebody who wasn't sure. And I was like, let me tell you something. I said, I actually took this class. I said, I this was the first book I got back in 2019. I got the book first. And I was like, I'm going to gift you this book. I said, you use it. I don't even know if they took the class. Um, Do they even still follow me? <laughs> I don't even know if they still follow me. But I, 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 I was like, give me your address. I'm going to send the book to you. So hopefully um, they took in a class. Like I said, I'm a, I forgot her name, but I, I know when I see her, if I see if a picture didn't change, I, I know when I see her, but um, that actually got me wondering now how she's doing because I can definitely put, because I use my website to actually to pay for the postage and send it to her. So I can look that up to find out how she's doing. I'm going to think about that because I know for sure she's like, oh, I thought about taking her class, but you know, I, I wasn't sure. And I was like, girl, I took it. I said, and I drove to the class. 
And I, and I tell people all the time because they think I was playing. I say, no, I'm like, that was a road trip. Like, I'm so mad. Like, that's why I was saying, like, my, my high school diploma, my all my degree, my degree I got from college, all that stuff had got lost when, in between us moving. And I had a camera because I blogged that whole drive there and the whole journey. I just didn't record in the classroom. But me and my sister, we blogged that whole experience. And wow, it was worth it. It was really that's worth amazing. it. And I'll do it again. I will do it again. I promise you. That's I will come amazing. back. Well, hey, do it again. I would love to have you. I got another event coming up in March. You'll already be out this way. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm the one. I'm going to be in California for a week. I'll be there for March. I'm leaving Kentucky March first, and I know for sure I'll get there maybe like the second, and then I'm going to leave on the eighth. So that's crazy because my mm -hmm. event is the fifth through the seventh. No. Yeah. Yeah. Hit me up if you want. Oh, I will. Let, let me know. Let us oh, know, I but I would love to have you listen. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart no problem. for hanging out today, for <laughs> sharing your story with everybody that's listening right now. I'm mm -hmm. sure that somebody in some way was able to connect with your story um, and about how you fought through and how you're doing so well now on the yeah. other side of it. So thank you. Um, before we go, can you tell everybody how they can reach out to you if they want to purchase a wig? Yeah. Just plug, plug, plug. So my website is simply irresistible dot shop. Uh, if you go on my Instagram page, which is simply irresistible beauty, all one word, no underscores or anything in between it. Or you can follow me on TikTok, Simply Irresistible. I'm on Facebook, Simply Irresistible Beauty. Uh, every platform you can find me on. But um, anytime you need to reach out to me, you can shoot a text, 859-965-9338. Um, I, I always respond back fast to the text messages because I'm able to kind of do more yes, than one thing at a time. But um, you can send me a DM or anything, um, anything I can help you with, like I said, and I'm more so focused on the hair loss. I, I, I care about the scalp, but it helps the, the health and I, I set medical insurance. So if that's something you're interested in or you know someone interested in it, I'm here. So <laughs> thank you. Again, thank you so much, Christina. I appreciate you. I love you. And I just am so thankful. I really appreciate it. I really, I'm so glad I seen that DM because I do not even respond to my off day. <laughs> So I was like, oh, did she just ask me? I'm like, heck yeah. Like, oh, let me respond. And I didn't even I'm like, did I respond fast enough? I'm like, Lord. I'm, yeah. yes, so you are I'm excited about that. I'm really I'm here. I'm excited about that. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing your new students. And I'm one thing about you, you're gonna share the work. So I'm looking yes, forward I to do. it. I'm looking forward to see it. And I hope everybody that um all those in the limbo, girl, go under that pole. Go under the pole. <laughs> And join the community. There's no reason you're not yes. part of the community. Yes. It's a million, yeah. a billion people in the world. We can't service everybody. Just remember That's that. right. Just That's remember right. that. When you if you feel like, oh, if I do this, I'm it everybody can't service everybody. Everybody can't meet everybody's needs. We gonna need more of y'all. There's no other way to put it. We're gonna need more of y'all. So yes. join. Join, join, Let's join. Do this. Yes. God bless everybody. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It was amazing, right? Like her, her story is really awesome. What I love about doing these interviews with students is that you guys get to experience what it was like from them from their eyes. And you'll see the trend for each person that I bring on an interview their stories are completely different. No two stories are the same. Of course, there's going to be some similarities, but no two stories are the same. They're a little bit different. And so you'll be able to relate to each in individual at a different level. And what I really love about her story is how she shares, you know, how she came through and how she pushed through and she used ventilating as a tool to help her deal with grief and to help her deal with what she was going through. So that was amazing. Shout out to you, Christina. 
Um, and thank you again for coming and tuning into the live. So let me know. Uh, let me know over in the comments, what was the thing that you connected with Christina on the most? What was that thing that you connected with her on the most? I'm very interested in knowing that. Don't miss out. Make sure you are tuned into your emails. Make sure you click the bell to be notified on whatever your favorite platform is that you watch me so you don't miss out on a live. Enjoy your weekend. God bless you and I'll talk to you soon.